G'day guys. All right, Taz. Just test riding my 1989 Suzuki GS500 slingshot. Been a couple of weeks getting it up to scratch, making sure that everything was tight, clean, and the bike was rideable. And so today I thought I'd take it on our first test ride. Pretty icy, so I'm going carefully. And it's been quite a time since I was on a bike where you leant forward. This bike sort of feels very similar to the MC19 Honda CBR 250R that I had that was an 89 or a 90 model very similar position that was a four cylinder this is a two cylinder that was an angry modified little bike X race bike This is similar, but it seems a little bit more civilized for road use. Not the fastest bike on the planet, but it's quite pleasant. It's quite fun. It's really light. Feels pretty chuckable. along on these back roads really nicely front brake is not astounding it definitely works it's adequate for the size of the bike and the performance of the motorcycle but the back brake is surprisingly good doesn't want to nosedive that heavily when you put the front brake on wallows a little bit at times but the power delivery is really linear and it seems to give power right through to its 10,000 rev limit. Pigeon is 500cc thereabouts. Air cooled twin, single overhead cam with zero modifications. bike is said to produce about 45 horsepower it's 173 kilograms so it's pretty light for the power it's making it's approved under the lambs system in Australia and this would be a genuinely great motorcycle for anyone let alone someone on L's or P's learners or provisional license enough power to have fun on but it's not snatchy jerky not right up in the rev range This is a bike that you could have 
throughout your learning period and on. This is the E version, the naked version, and it's got an aftermarket screen, which I don't actually like that much. I think it detracts from the look of the bike, but you can get the GS500F, which is fully fared. A little bit heavier, but what it makes up for or what it gains in weight it probably makes up for in aerodynamics. Oh, the device. Seventeens, front and rear, the 130 on the back. The fact that it's 17s gives a pretty decent tire choice. This has just got Dunlop, Dunlop Battle Max on them. Which is just a good all round tyre for a lightweight motorcycle. But you can get some pretty decent Z rated tyres for it. Six speed. Seating position is comfortable. More sport tourer than genuine sport bike. So you lean forward slightly, but the clip-ons are on rises. Your heels are about equal with your bum. You're not lent forward, taking all the weight on your wrists. But it does pay to clamp the fuel tank with your knees just to use your core to help support to take the weight off your wrists anyway, makes it more comfortable. Bike is exceptionally narrow. And even for my height at 165 centimetres, the seat height is very low. It could afford to go up an inch quite readily. Give you more clearance, more tip in. It's icy through here, so we won't be uh, demonstrating tip in, that's for sure. bike is sure footed this is not an ideal day for riding at all it's snowing further up there's been some frost down here at lower altitudes certainly not a perfect day but the bike is surprisingly nimble and sure-footed it's quite confidence inspiring actually with the suspension it's not bad now getting used to it it's still quite soft in the back but not terrible absorbing these potholes and undulations in the road quite nicely there's no chattering or wobble in the front and this bike front tire is probably at about 85% the back tire is brand new so it's certainly got adequate rubber A 
I really like the engine. Right? It's really nice. It's fun. Linear. Surprisingly spirited. And the brakes and suspension can more than handle the power of the engine. Stylistically, it is very much a 90s twin. Very simple. From a modification standpoint, the fact that it's got a horseshoe cradle frame that sort of wraps around the engine makes it difficult. But it is steel, so it is world war. And these bikes are very popular. Lamb's bikes. Ooh, ice. They're pretty popular for modification. And that's very much my plans with it. certainly feel the engine it's air cooled you can feel the engine on your legs it's not insanely hot by any stretch has a factory oil cooler to help manage the temperatures Like a lot of these engines, it doesn't run a particularly aggressive tune. So I doubt, unless you're in heavy traffic on a hot day, you'd stand any chance of overheating it. the lot I'm real happy with it perfect for smaller riders newer riders lightweight riders seat is surprisingly comfortable this is an early model and one of the only changes they made from 89 to 2009 was on the early models the front of the seat goes up the tank on the later models it sort of hugs around the tank this is an early model so the seat comes up in front of the tank and it's surprisingly comfortable This bike, despite being 1989, has got only 24,000 kilometres on it. It probably hasn't been loved, but it hasn't been abused either. I'd say that only a few of the ponies have escaped the paddock over the years. Performance wise, it's only just behind my wife's CBR 500R Honda. It's got a very similar feel to that bike, just maybe not as refined and being carby other than fuel ejected. Just not quite as refined, but similar bike, similar niche would appeal to a similar market segment so I've put a new tyre on the back new plugs, new air filter new fuel 
run the cob, you kind of throw the cob and throw the fuel. Tightened everything. And the bike certainly feels really good. As I said before, really solid, sure footed. So I plan on uh, stripping it back. Just altering the subframe a little bit. Going down the line of creating a modern cafe racer. Gonna go a black theme. So rest assured guys there won't be any patina in sight on this bike. Gonna be murdered out black as the primary colour. Try and strip it down, lighten it, and change the gear ratio to give it a little bit more acceleration. The top speed supposedly 186, and to be honest, I don't really feel the need to be doing 186 on a 1989 500cc that I don't know the history of. So I'm going to gear it down a little bit, give it better acceleration. Let's give it the uh, Perception of having more horsepower by gearing it down, give it more acceleration, make it a little bit livelier. Gonna change the exhaust, potentially change the intake, therefore the jetting. Definitely fun bike to ride. More than enough power to have some fun on. You definitely could long distance ride on it. Probably not the bike I'd grab to ride across the Nullarbor or anything, but on these back roads. I'm certainly having fun. Any bike's fun, but I'm just having fun cruising on this. It's a cool bike, I'm really impressed with it. I've wanted to ride one for ages. And I'm really not disappointed with it. Got it for an absolute steal. It's a bike that was a non-runner. But it took me about 15 minutes to get running. Quite as talky as what I'm used to. But drop again, disappear. Yeah, got it for an absolute steal. So 
it's going to be a cheap and cheerful build. Probably end up being the cheapest build I've done. And I plan on doing probably the most amount of fabrication of any build I've done. But yeah, who's this bike for? Uh, learners, new riders, riders coming back to riding, shorter riders, lighter riders, be that women or men, kids. Just a good all round bike. Built them from 89 to 09, so there's a squillion parts out there. The bikes are cheap. You can pick yourself up an absolute bargain. Parts are cheap. Yeah, if you're in the market for a new project or cheap run around, your first motorcycle, I would definitely check out the GS500. I'm not a big fan of the fared version, but the naked version looks pretty bloody good. Goes really nicely. Do yourself a favour guys, check it out. But as I come back into Sheffield guys and head towards home, uh, till I see you next time, I know it's alright Taz, I'm out. <laughs>